Tree and this is Stitches TV and today do you know what we're going to make today we are going to make some wonderful aprons I got this amazing fabric from an area in Paris called Marche Saint Pierre probably not pronouncing that correctly but look at this this is the shop it's called Dreyfus it's got four floors of fabric yes four floors of fabric and there are probably about six shops in that area so this is actually African material and don't you think that this one really looks like some sort of Lucy and Day fabric from the sort of 50s but you can use any African fabric so long as you mix it up a little bit so it looks a little bit cool so look what I did here so you could do whatever you want but I've used one color for the frill one pattern for the frill I used the same then for the pocket and the waistband and then I've got a contrast on the main part of it Right, for this main, for the main section here, what you have to do is you've got to cut a rectangle. My rectangle is, say, about 75 by about 37. And then you get that and you've got to fold it over and then you just cut off that corner and make it into more of a curve. And then remember how much I love my notches. So you've got to do your center notch at the top and at the bottom. Now for my pocket, let's measure my pocket. My pocket is roughly 22, and then I've allowed a little bit extra for the hem there. So say my pocket is about 26 by 26, it's actually a square. So now what we have to do, we have to cut the section that's gonna be the frill, but do you know what? The reason why, one of the reasons why I use this African material is because I just love the selvage they normally have. Look, look at this lovely colour on here. So that means that I don't have to do a hem, which is a wicked bargain. So for this apron today, I've got two lengths, two lengths of selvage, which is the edge of the fabric, because I love it, remember, because it has that nice little edge on it. I've got two lengths of 120 even though mine says 119 and I'm going to join those together and they're going to be the frill that goes all the way around the edge now remember we don't need to do a hem because we're keeping this lovely selvage so for my waistband um, I used a length that was 160 centimeters and then the width of the waistband I've done 10 centimeters because then you're going to lose some when you put it in the seam We've cut all our pieces out, so we're ready to sew. Now the first thing that we need to do is to press our pocket into shape. So what we're going to do is, we're gonna fold a little hem, and then another little hem, and then we're just going to press that, like that, because then it will be easier to sew. Right, while you're here, look, I'm gonna press these bits in as well. The bits, I'm going to press all the side bits in of the pockets as well so that they're, they're going to be all ready to sew as well and then I don't have to come back to the iron again. So the first thing that I'm going to do is do the hem on the pocket. That's this bit here on the pocket. Okay, so I've done the hem. So that was quick, that's easy. Now I'm going to get my old trusty bonder web out. I talk about it all the time. Instead of using pins, I'll use bonder web or even double-sided sticky tape to, to hold it in place because I never ever use pins or hardly ever use pins. Right, so we're still doing the pocket, but what I like to do is I cut bonder web very, very thin. Can you see that? And what I'm gonna do is using an iron, I'm just gonna put it all the way around the edge and press it and then go along there and press it, so make it straight, and press it and then come up here. But you know what, be really careful because it's an absolute nightmare if it goes on your iron. Um, I don't know if anybody else does this, but um, why are they not doing it? Why use pins? Use bonder web and then sew. Look how great that is. It's now all held in place, ready for me to sew. Why would I not do that? Now, what we need to do first of all, you don't have to do this. But am I a perfectionist? I don't know. I like to do these funny little triangle things here. But you know what? Because it's all glued on, you're going to have no problem. You just start there, come up, come across, and then go all the way round, 
and then up the other side and do the same on the other side and it will be easy because this is glued okay so look I've started by the seam I'm coming up and then I'm just going to go backwards and then look I just go all the way around it's really easy so look pocket how easy is that that, that what does that take five minutes it's really easy now we're going to take those two long strips which are for our frill and we're going to join them together right sides together and look I really enjoy all of that writing on the selvage I love it and those numbers but if you don't like it then you can always do a, a hem right now what you have to do is you've got to do you've got to gather it because that's going to be the frill isn't it that's going to go around the apron look so we need to gather it so that's using your largest straight stitch on the sewing machine but do it in two bits because if the thread breaks it's an absolute nightmare okay so what we're going to do now for the frill is we're going to stitch about a centimeter away on our largest straight stitch coming all the way along we're going to stop at the middle no backwards and forwards because you won't be able to pull those threads and then start again, do the same from the middle, going all the way down to the other end. We've got to pull one of the threads, but not both of the threads, so that we get this gathering magic going on. So I'm just pulling the bottom thread, and then just slowly and carefully pushing this along. It's just like doing the rufflet on your curtains. These are just like mini curtains. It's so easy, look. But just do it carefully, carefully and you'll be fine. So look, look what I've done. I've gathered it, look, there's the edge, so I've gathered it and I've placed it around here just to make it more or less fit. It doesn't have to be perfect because you'll just chop it off if it's too long. But what we need to do, we need to put it right sides together, good old right sides together. Now what you will find when you go to sew it, I recommend sewing on this side, by the way, so you can stitch exactly on that line. When you do so, some of these bits will go underneath, so take care there. You want to pull them out and make them like that. So where you're going to sew is as close onto that line as possible. If you have to be anything, be over it rather than behind it. Okay, so look, I've got this little bit extra, but you know what? I'm just going to leave it and then I'll just chop it off afterwards. So look how I'm sewing. Just outside inside or I don't know is that inside or inside or outside I don't know anyway there of that line so I'm just going to go all the way to the end with my noisy sewing machine that probably needs oiling backwards and forwards should we have a look wow look at that now when you press it it really does get flattened I mean you don't want it too flat but look how brilliant that is but before we press it what do we have to do? <gasps> zigzag. We have to zigzag the edges. We've got to zigzag the edges. Now when you do it, do it this way round rather than that way round so that you can see that you're capturing all the frill. Straight stitch. Now I'm using the width of my sewing foot as my guide and I'm just keeping it to the edge as I go around. Look, like that. All Right, so done that, done my top stitching. Look, beautiful top stitching. It looks better when it's pressed, but we'll do that towards the end. So I know where my center is. What I'm going to do, oh, scissors. What I'm going to do now is we have to just gather this in a little bit. Okay, so it's like this here. Okay, so to do gathering, remember it's your largest stitch, no backwards and forwards. We're doing it about a centimeter away from the waist line and off we go. Right, something I forgot to say, when I do the gathering and I'm not starting on the frill, I'm starting on the main part of the apron, okay, just there, and I'm finishing on the main part of the apron over there. Now what we have to do, we pull one of the threads, not both of the threads, remember, and we just gather until you get to the sort of size that you want it to be. And I'm now going to get my waistband ready. So, always want to know where the centre is. So I've folded it over. I'm going to do a little notch and another little notch. Okay. And then I'm going to match that, if I can get hold of it. Right sides together. 
I'm going to match, oh, where is it? I'm going to match that notch up with the notch that I made for the center on the apron. And I'm going to sew this way round, on the gathered way round side. I'm going to sew from that center notch, going all the way out to the edge there, and I'm going to stop there. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. But sew, make sure you're sewing on the gathered side. So look, I've stitched it on. It actually looks really nice wide. <laughs> I wish I made it that wide now. Never mind, I haven't. But if you want to make it wider, look, remember how nice it looks. So can you see that? All that we've done is just attach it to our waistband. Now what you have to do, just take my word for it, okay? You need to take this to the ironing board just because it will make your life easier and you want to press this starting from there dead flat okay going all the way to here because it really will make your job easier so look i've pressed it inside out purely and simply because i've got to sew from there not catching that frill from there going all the way down and then doing like a nice pointy thing right so we've stitched the tie now we've got to turn it inside out so I lick my fingers a little bit just to start it off because it can be a bit tricky to start it off I'm going to put the scissors in there and then I'm going to start easing it over the scissors like that there it is it's going to come out there okay can you see that does that make sense to you no. so that no but that that's the oh, end right, of the okay. scissors yeah, so yeah. I'll hold on to that I don't let go because otherwise I've got to start all over again yeah, yeah, start yeah. easing this down and then look you've done your tie so do the same on the other side now when we were doing that long tube for the tie in the trade we would have actually done it so that we included all of this as well but i think that's a little bit involved for you so what we're going to do we're going to press the ties and whilst we press the ties we're going to press these back as well hem those back put some bonder web there so they're ready to hand sew or to be top stitched here's the amazing funky apron now how long did that take esther half an hour mm. uh, a bit more <laughs> no okay maybe 35 <laughs> minutes but look how wonderful that is and imagine the possibilities thanks a lot for watching stitches tv see you next time bye <laughs>